interest for order. Uh, we do have a quorum. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented in our packets? <coughs> Ms. Figueroa? Second. Second, Mr. Sparana. Thank you. Any discussion on the resolution? All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The uh, agenda is approved. Thank you. The minutes from both uh, the January 31st regular board meeting and the February 8th special board meeting are in our packets. The, February, uh, the January 31st minutes begin at page 2, and the February 8th minutes begin at page 14. So I have a motion to accept the minutes for both meetings. Let's take them one at a time. A motion to approve the January 31st regular board meeting minutes. So moved. Mr. Sparana, thank you. Second. Jackie, was that you? Oh, Georgie, Georgie. Ms. Nugent, thank you. Uh, motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? January 31st minutes are approved. Uh, the February 8th minutes. Can I make a point of clarification on the February 8th meeting? Yes. Uh, if there's no objection, could uh, there be a change? Uh, about the approval of the two resolutions, just noting that Ms. Nugent was present since she attended the meeting uh, via FaceTime under uh, open meeting law. That's not a true attendance. She can't vote, but she was present, so I think it should be acknowledged that she was present. Yep. But otherwise, it carried unanimously mm -hmm. on both resolutions. Yep. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yep. So now I should just say unanimously with Ms. Nugent present. Okay. Cool. But it's not the point of how you want to handle it. You just have that. Are you okay with that correction? Okay. Yep. Uh, then I'll move it as amended.
Next up is Julio Feliciano, an Albany bus operator, also 25 years of service. Before starting with CDTA in 1993 as a bus operator, Julio worked full-time at Albany Medical Center in the housekeeping department. He says he heard good things about CDTA and wanted to join the team. He says thanks to Mike Collins for recruiting him. Wow. <laughs> he appreciates the opportunity to get to know different people when he's out on his routes. He drives the number one Central Avenue in Wolf Road and the number 10 Western Avenue in Colony Center. Julio has spent the last two and a half decades with us for a variety of reasons, but says the camaraderie with his fellow bus operators is the main reason he has stayed. He says it's a supportive and fun environment, which makes it easy to come to work every day. Julio has received gold, safety, and perfect attendance awards over the years, as well as many commendation letters from management. During his free time, he likes to play handball and softball, in the spring, he participates in a 50 and older over league. We asked Julio what is on the horizon for his career at CDTA. He says he has a few more years on the road before he decides to park the bus for good. Thank you for 25 great years. We appreciate your service and dedication to CDTA and our customers. So this stuff never gets old. Um, you got you have two kind of theme here. Two, two guys who had other careers before they came here. Um, and when I talk to them, for them to think highly of the company, knowing where they've been and what they've accomplished before they came here, uh, is sort of a, in my mind, a straw in our cap. They're they're like a lot of the people that we bring in here with 25, 30 years of service. But you can count on these guys every single day, um, without exception, both of them. If you're in a jam and you need help, you call one of these two guys. You know, Julio and I joke whenever I see him, you know, what are you working today? Is it a, you know, sort of a tripper with your work? And, and you know, he, he's able to adjust his schedule based on, you know, what, what's going on in his life, but, but still make, you know, a, a very competitive wage. Same with Barry, you know, Barry, uh, as a police officer, has a pension, but works when he can work, but also Barry works when he can help us, you know, because he enjoys what he does. So, you know, tip of the hat to these, these two guys, you know, they, they, they're why I keep coming back, you know, because they, they, they make it fun. Thank you. Wish I had a better end than that. <laughs> fun is good. Fun is good. <laughs> It's not fun. It should be going. All right. Yeah, we know. You don't think I'm going out? I know, you're going out quietly. It wouldn't be Joe if I weren't getting out. All right, committee reports. So there was no formal meeting of the governance committee, but the governance steering committee met on February 2nd in order to deliver the report on our board governance initiatives and improving the board governance uh, work as well as the relationship with the CEO and senior staff on board governance items. We presented, uh, the steering committee presented to uh, the board members as well as uh, senior staff and other staff members who participated with us in the retreat on November 8th. And we will be doing a more executive summary version presentation to our external stakeholders who also participated with us in the original retreat. So I want to thank the steering committee, Georgie, Denise, Joe, and I were the steering committee. Um, and I want to thank Carm and Jamie for their uh, support and making sure that we stayed on track, uh, making sure we kept Doug happy and, and uh, all of those things. So um, 
We've gotten through the process as far as delivering the formal work, but now the real work kind of hits the road, the rubber hits the road in making sure that we stay true to what we decided to do and implement the, the action items that we presented to the board and the senior staff and, and other staff members. At the work session, when we reported out on February 2nd, we adopted as a board four resolutions, but we adopted those at a meeting that was not an official meeting. So it was more a ceremonial adoption of those resolutions. At this meeting, I would like to formalize uh, the adoption of those resolutions so that we can memorialize what our plan is for the path forward for stronger governance for CBTA. The resolutions are one-page items, um, pages 16, 17, 18, and 19. And we'll go through those and uh, ask for approval one at a time. So on page 16, I would ask uh, in a motion, I, I move the motion that the board, uh, we adopt the Board of Directors Advancement Program, that's resolution number seven of 2018. And essentially it's uh, adopting the work of the Governance Fine Tuning Work Session Steering Committee. So I move that resolution. Second, Ms. Figueroa, thank you. Any discussion on resolution number seven? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> resolution is carried, thank you. The second resolution is resolution number eight, which is to adopt a specific board governing mission. Um, again, some of this work we had done in the past, and it's really a refresher to what we had done in the past but we want to reaffirm that we are adopting a board governing mission. And this is not the mission of CBTA, it's the mission of the board as far as how we are, are, uh, are, are, are governing CBTA from a board perspective. So I move resolution number eight to adopt the board governing mission for the CBTA board. Second. Second, Ms. Nugent, thank you. Any discussion on resolution number eight? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? <coughs> resolution carries. Thank you. Resolution number nine is to adopt board standing committees. And again, this is, uh, we have current standing committees, but through the process of the, uh, the, full, the, the, the retreat that we did, we want to change the names of the standing committees, and we want to add a new committee that will specifically focus on stakeholder relationships. Uh, currently, stakeholder relations falls under one of the other subcommittees, and we felt that it wasn't getting the attention that it really needs because our stakeholder relationships are very important to us. So we're going to carve that out and create uh, a third working committee in concert with, uh, with what has been an existing governance committee, and the governance committee will now be called the Board Operations Committee. So I move resolution number nine to adopt the board standing committee structure. A second? A second. second. Mike, thank you. Any discussion on the resolution? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution is carried. Thank you. And the last resolution is number 10, which is to adopt board standing committee guidelines. So there were there were attachments in the work product that we completed that laid out what the work goals are, or objectives are for each of the committees. And this resolution simply adopts those um, guidelines for each of the four committees that we just adopted in the last resolution. So I move resolution number 10 to adopt the board standing committee guidelines. Second. Second, Mr. Sparana, thank you. Any discussion on resolution number 10? I, Mr. Chairman, I think it should be noticed that we can go back and revisit these anytime that we want to, to adjust them or whatever. Absolutely. Or not we, you. Sure. Yes, we can. I wanted to note, too, that I think it's important that we uh, try to recruit uh, for our vacant positions on the board to just ensure that we're able to actually carry out the, the things that have been laid out in the action plan. And on that note, and, and I think it was it was kind of highlighted to me more recently with Joe's decision to step out of CDTA, 
Um, I've asked Karm if he would put together kind of a matrix of the attributes that each of us brings to the table right now and try to identify vacancies in specific attributes that would help with, with uh, people on the board that, that fill those slots. So we will have an opening in Rensselaer County. We have an opening in uh, um, Saratoga County that's been open for a while. Um, Mark's term has expired, so we need to get, I think your term has expired anyway. So we need to get you moving through the process of reappointment. So there's three chairs that, that I would be willing to reach out to just to share that information. We can't pick the person. That's up to leadership and the governor to pick who the, who the replacements are. But if we can provide some guidance as to what kind of a person would be helpful to us, then it's up to them to choose to either fill with, with those attributes or not. But, but that is, an, and I appreciate the comment because I think it's very timely that we do that right now. So we're fortunate that we have, uh, you know, the two new Schenectady County members, and we have Albany County now filled. So um, we got to work on the other two, and I know you'll help with that. Um, you're going to get a top of the line person, guaranteed, much better than me. Um, just a note that, in addition to Mark's term, there's other terms that are open. There are others. Actually, other terms that are long expired. Like me. And that's, a, it's a, that's an issue, again, not our issue, but we have to gently remind uh, the governor's office. But in fact, the governor's office then has to go back to the, the, the nominating county. That's where it just gets a little. Well, Kirsten, general principal, my spot is a gimme. He can point anybody, doesn't need any legislature or anything. That can go right to the governor. Thank you, it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, vote on the resolution. I don't think we actually voted. Yep, we did. We did? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, resolution of the tennis carry. Thank you. And the standing committee, uh, with the exception of Joe, unless he wants to stay around, has agreed to... Um, stay involved as a steering committee to assist the implementation of the items that we just adopted. So once we get through the implementation and things are, uh, are rolling along, so to speak, the uh, standing committee will then step aside and, and our, our work will be essentially completed, put a bow on it. You know, I might be able to be coming back as a consultant. <laughs> Same thing. I should. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, that's what we get to go. <laughs> All right, Performance Oversight Committee report. Ms. Figueroa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Performance Oversight Committee that uh, here at the CA headquarters on the last week on the 21st at noon. Um, and uh, we have a couple of uh, consent agenda items that we'll ask for votes on. Uh, the first was a uh, contract for marketing and communication services. Our marketing and communications agreements and <coughs> fair collection system have expired. Uh, a new RFP was developed and the scope of work included development of marketing strategies, corporate image advertising campaigns, communication plans, branding and communication consultation, graphic design, and writing support as necessary. 11 firms submitted proposals, and an evaluation committee reached, uh, reviewed each submission, interviewed candidates, and conducted reference checks. Um, staff proposes to engage selected firms under term agreements. Uh, these agreements do not guarantee specific work, but allow staff to work with the firm when their specialized services are needed. Uh, the project manager will coordinate a detailed scope of work and submit it to the appropriate firms when required. Um, at this time, we need a motion to award three uh, three year term contracts with two one year options to three entities Over It Media of Albany, Gramercy Communications of Troy, and Spark Shop of Albany. Uh, the total value of services is not to exceed $250,000 in any given fiscal year during the life of the agreements. Uh, so I ask for. I'll move the resolution on page 20, resolution 11. 
Motion by Ms. Figueroa to approve contracts for marketing and communication services. I'll second. Ms. Valentico, thank you. Any discussion on the resolution? I have a question. Yeah. The uh, 1250 or 250 a year, the allocation of most of the firms is to be determined later? Yes. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. Um, Basically, Mark, we have the ability within each year, within those three firms, to get up to that total level of all-encompassing. The likelihood is less than more than the likelihood. The okay. likelihood is we probably will not reach that cap over most years. Any other questions? And just for clarification, the reason for three firms is that they all have unique um, skills and services that they can provide, and not one could provide all. But that basically is the idea. Where not one is the best. In the best manner yeah. that we want to use. Right, exactly. Menu. Put us a menu. <laughs> right. You like menus. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution is carried. Thank you. Yes. Okay. One abstention. Okay, and then the next item is to approve a, an agreement to distribute transit passes. Um, approximately 15 years ago, CDTA began working with the Coalition of County Departments of Social Services, local employers, and job placement agencies to meet the transit needs of people making the transition from welfare to work. Due to funding issues in 2011, um, three of the four counties could no longer provide passes under this program. However, Albany County has since identified an alternate funding source for this purpose, and we have continued to, uh, to do that program with them. Federal funds are provided to the state for carrying out related work, which includes providing transportation services to eligible participants. Uh, this item could permit CDTA to execute an agreement with New York State Department of Transportation so Albany County can continue to distribute free transit passes to temporary assistance <coughs> for needy family eligible clients. So at this time, we need a motion to execute agreement to pay 007090 with New York State DOT uh, to fund 100% of the community solutions for transportation program in the amount of $149,371. No, I did not. Okay. I, I, Can I have a motion <coughs> to approve the agreement with New York State DOT for the funding of transit passes? I move it. For TANF eligible clients in Albany County. Motion, Mr. Lahat. Thank you. Thank you. Second, Mr. Schaefer. Thank you. Discussion on the resolution? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is carried. Thank you. I think that's the first time it's uh, passed without any. <laughs> Just going down singing. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, for the remainder of my report, I'll go on. Uh, there were no uh, items scheduled under the audit committee and uh, no items under the investment committee. Uh, under administrative discussion items, uh, we have a risk management and workers' compensation quarterly report. Um, our procedures require a quarterly review of the adequacy of the risk management self-insurance account and the workers' compensation self-insurance account. The committee has determined that our accounts are adequate at this time, and Amanda can provide any further details if we have any questions on that. Any questions for Amanda? Okay. Um, we had the monthly management financial report. Mike Collins gave the financial report, and uh, the mortgage reporting tax was under budget by almost 20%, but is flat for the year. Um, customer affairs were down due to weather and past returns. Uh, wages were over budget due to the quarterly attendance bonus and a contractual wage increase, um, a scheduled wage increase. Um, so it affected the numbers. Uh, workers' compensation was over budget due to a special loss of use award. Um, professional services was over budget due to timing of invoices. Uh, purchase transportation was up this month due to more trips being moved to outside vendors um, and a CPI increase for NX services. Liability claims was under budget for the month. Um, we are in a satisfactory cash flow position at this time. However, we are awaiting a state reimbursement for lost payments. 
Any questions for Mike on this one? A little late breaking <coughs> good news for Mr. Collins. Because um, he doesn't like to utter it, so I'll utter it for him. We got the money, so. It's always a sign. Stay off the line and come back to us. Well, we want to make sure. Cool. <laughs> check, well, we're not sure if the check clear. Actually, it's electronic. It's got a wire. Yeah, it's wire. It's wire. It's wire. It's wire. It's wire. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so then uh, the monthly non-financial report, uh, Karn gave us the non-financial report. Our total ridership is down 9% for the month and 2% uh, for the year. Um, we talked about that actually being a trend nationwide in terms of reduced ridership, but also that the weather affected uh, our ridership a lot during that period. Um, star ridership was down 1% for the month and 2% for the year. On time performance was 76%, and there were two lines <coughs> not on time. Uh, missed trips were uh, 25 this month, and the mean distance between the service interruptions was 33,285 Um Scheduled work was at 84%. There were 18 preventable and 39 non-preventable accidents, and 95% of customer complaints were closed within 10 days. And our website, uh, page views were 1,057,753. And then uh, we did have, actually, we did have an executive session um, where there were no, uh, there were no uh, items, uh, <coughs> there were no motions in that executive session. It was just a quick uh, review of some uh, litigation from the work. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Denise? Thank you, Denise. Sure. The Planning and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on February 22nd, and uh, because Joe had a conflict, I chaired in his uh, absence. Uh, we had two items that came to the committee. Um, Ross Barrett provided us with an update on major capital projects. The report is in your packets. There's lots going on as we continue to build relationships and advance BRT project components. Uh, Mike Collins provided an update on the fiscal year 2019 budget. Some revenue and expense decision points remain, but we continue to fine tune in preparation of the board and hopefully adopting a budget at the March meeting. Uh, revenue projections such as mortgage reporting tax will likely be adjusted in March to reflect the positive year-long trend in a growing economy. We pr we're proposing to increase the federal maintenance line for operations to what would then become 80% of our federal allocation. And we're proposing to do that because the state has been very generous with its capital funds that it's been giving us over the past couple of years. That's part of a five-year capital plan that the state uh, has, has given us in support of our capital program. So with the state funds to backfill, we're able to move more of what would normally be federal capital dollars into our operating budget in order to meet maintenance needs that actually qualify as capital but that are in the operating budget. If that makes anybody, if I confuse anybody, let me know. Um, we don't anticipate having a budget surplus at the end of this year, so one of the items that was in the current year budget, we finished a year ago with about a half million dollar surplus. We had plugged that in as a revenue item, even though it's not really, it's obviously not a recurring revenue, but we're not anticipating having a surplus this year, so that $500,000 hole is one of the items that we're needing to fill. Uh, Governor Cuomo's budget is including a 1% increase in state operating assistance for CDTA and other upstate transit systems. Uh, while this is good, we are advocating with our elected officials for a larger increase to STOA. Uh, we're asking for 10%. Um, the governor's budget included, I believe, 7.4 for MTA. So, you know, somewhere somewhere higher than 1% is what we're hoping for. Personnel expenses such as wages, health care, and pension will increase by about 2.2%. Those categories represent 72% of our overall budget. So uh, when they go up by 2.2%, they carry a significant amount of dollars because of the percentage of the overall budget that they, they uh, take up. 
The committee and staff had a good discussion about the future of health care and opportunities to change our current system, uh, not only for the benefit of the budget, but also hopefully to improve health care options for what's available to our employees. We've invested heavily in technology over the past few years, and we're going to be proposing uh, an increase in the line item to support technology. Uh, much of that increase is coming in the form of maintenance agreements to support the technology that we've implemented into the system. <coughs> There's good news in our fuel budget. Uh, the fuel price that we're locked into will go down by 65 cents a gallon, and that's actually resulted in a reduction of fuel cost of $900,000 this fiscal year. And staff continues to fine-tune our assumptions we do anticipate presenting a balanced budget to the board in March for the new fiscal year that will begin on April 1st. Miss anything? Good. Thumbs up. The next meeting of the committee will be at noon on March 22nd here at 110 Waterbury Ave. Any questions about either Ross's report to the committee or Mike's report to the committee? Can I say something, Mr. Chairman? Uh, on the personal expenses, where you can tell, up to about 72%. I, I mean, I, I guess you would know this. Um, when we start getting up to that number, that's going to be Chapter 11. No, it's, uh, and I, honestly, Joe, I think that 72% of the whole budget is probably consistent. I don't think I don't think that number is growing. Um, our total expenses we're budgeting for about a two, three, three percent increase overall. Let's see. 2.6. So 70 percent a couple of years. <laughs> well, some, honestly, some of our public materials we round that number, but we've been between 70 and 72. You know, it moves a little bit. That doesn't really change much. That's a percentage of the overall budget. Oh, I thought it was it's a people-driven business. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Don't don't pun intended, but it's you know, it's, you know, it's it's a place that's heavy. Mr. Chair, I don't have any questions, but I have a couple comments. One okay. on the budget, um, if anyone was not able to make that meeting, just unsolicited advice, but I read through Mike, Mike's packet, and the, you know, just, it just really shows how this evolves and we end up with the final product. It's, you know, it's important to grasp that. And then the presentation that Ross gave us as well, that's a good one to look through. And it was really brought up, you know, over years of this organization, or at least in, you know, honestly, eight to ten years, but I've seen um, just the evolution and how we put our projects together and how we're really truly finding new partners to share business with and do business with and split the costs with. And, you know, it was an excellent presentation with the review and we get one there. Mark, I just had a question about the governor's budget recommended a 1% increase. We're asking for more, and two part question how much more are we asking for? And what's been the history traditionally? I think the governor lowballs some, some of these things the legislature mentions it. In view of our uh, you know, honor this year, uh, we're in a position to ask for. Uh, Bigger increment than usual, despite the uh, squeezing the state budget. Well, yeah, um, the the nit to ask is ten percent, and we're firmly um, behind that and echoing that. Um, and you're right, Mark. Traditionally, the way this negotiation tends to play out, the governor—I won't use the same term—but the governor's budget includes a number, uh, and then. And not just trans, but a lot of the lines in the state budget. You rely on your, your legislature to to negotiate a different number. Um, <clears throat> we have had, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in the last three or four years, success with our legislature. I can tell you that our our delegation is as supportive as any delegation in upstate. In fact, I kind of still wear a nip to hat and cross over into other 
delegations uh, and talk to them. We have a lot of support. Maybe it's because of the work we're doing that you know, garnered our recognition. But I think it really, though, goes back to what Georgie just said and what Dave has been saying. It's relationships. Um, you can be really, really good, but if you don't have relationships with elected leaders, community officials, developers, um, and so on and so on, it, it is for naught. Um, because you don't get recognized, you don't get noticed. You know, frankly, you don't have relevance. Um, and that's really what we focused on, uh, being relevant. So 1%, 10% is the nip to ask. Um, as Dave said, 7.5%, well, maybe 10% is the MTA request. Um, and what we're saying is, you know, that all of those complicated discussions, don't forget that there are healthy, vibrant transit systems north of Yonkers. Where, where that goes, uh, you know, you'll see my report, like a daily conversation. And we're, I know Carm said this, but we're very fortunate to have a strong elected contingent to support us. I mean, they, I, I think it might, and again, we've always had good people, but, but they've banded together to be a stronger voice, um, and they understand what we do and the value of what we bring to the community. You know, they've taken the time to come visit us here. Um, so they see it, not only, not only that they're advocating for service and, and, and capital, but they see the value of what we bring when we do that. They trust that we're good stewards of the money that the state gives us. Um, and I think that goes a long way for us in the capital region with our delegation. They, they've, uh, they've been very supportive and we're fortunate to have that support as a block, not, not just individual <coughs> members who support us. So their voice has become stronger as a block in helping upstate systems to get more transit assistance. We've only included the governor's proposed 1% in the budget right now. We're not, we're not banking on more. Uh, last year, as we went through the process, um, more than one, right? Yeah, just double check. As we went through the process and approached the board's approval of the final budget, we had pretty solid information that the Senate and the uh, Assembly were going to approve a higher percentage than what the, the governor proposed. So we did at that time increase the STOA amount based on what we felt comfortable with from, from the Senate. And assembly. Uh, we're not there yet. We don't really have a, a strong sense of, of where that number could go. But that could change between now and next month's meeting. And we can be posted on that. <clears throat> and the X factor, I think, this year is $4.4 billion budget deficit. Although recently that number has been called into question. So you know, who knows? It's 4.4 or 3.2 or it's, it's certainly not a surplus. It's kind of the X factor. Well, I can say that the elected officials that I ran into this week, after I said hello, the first response they had was, we know. So, <laughs> they, they knew exactly what I was getting out there. there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, anything else on planning and stakeholder relations committee? CEO's report, Mr. Basile. Mr. Sacro, my report is <clears throat> in your packet, and because of the good work of the committees and some of the discussion, we've covered two thirds of it, so I'll keep it a little shorter. Um, talking about um, engaging the community and building relationships, hold the morning of March 14th, if you would. Uh, we will host a panel discussion on economic development in the capital region. Um, we will will invite, or have invited, uh, several people outside of our company to talk about what's going on in the region, Chambers of Commerce, uh, uh, CG, people like that. Um, obviously, they will also uh, be talking about the role that we play uh, in improving connections in the region. Coincidentally, late breaking news coincidentally, uh, NIPTA will hold a series of events later that day. So we'll try to piggyback those <laughs> together so it's, it's a little more powerful. Now, we'll invite elected officials 
people with bike, community leaders, you know, our friends, sort of the same type of people who come to the state of CBTA. And we'll also uh, invite the media so that we can tell our, actually, so that others can tell our story for us. Um, in my <clears throat> wonderful Italian household as a kid, my mother used to tell us it's always better when someone says something nice about you than you saying something nice about yourself. In fact, you shouldn't say a whole lot of nice things about yourself. So it's sort of borrowing from that, that recipe. It, and it's true. Um, but as Dave said, you know, I'm, 10 years ago, I'm not sure we could pull off that event like this. I don't think it would have been believable. But as <clears throat> Georgie points out, some of the things Ross talked about, it's not only believable, it's true. So, so um, if you just block out, we'll give you some detail. It's coming together, it came together quickly. Uh, so, so you know, if you get a hold early in that day, it'd be great. Uh, voting continues. Talk about another great program for our new, um, for the new bicycle station locations for CDPHP cycle season two. Uh, I was it, I was at the Capitol this morning, and <clears throat> we were having a discussion with several people, lobbyists, people within the area, without, outside the area who knew us, and, and they pointed to bike sharing as something that's differentiating us uh, from the crowd in New York, and, and in their minds, would with additional funding. I made note of that. So of course, we encourage you to continue advocating for that. We'll see, we'll see how that part goes. But uh, season two is right around the corner, and, and we're gearing up. The transition on Navigator continues. Uh, our sales and support staff, and bus operators, um, and technicians who fix the boxes are doing a wonderful job and sort of um, patiently bringing our customers through the transition. There are more than 30,000 cards now in circulation. In fact, 20,000 or so are registered. I'm already. So, so people are taking our advice. Register the card. We know who you are. We can replace it if it's lost. You, we'll engage you in, in information about CDTA. So that, that, that's all going, I think, about as good as, as, as we could have hoped for. Hopefully, we get through this change in stuff and we kind of normalize our customer revenue and our boarding counts, which I am convinced are suffering because of that. We just don't know how much of our decline is because of that, but we know that some of that is, is in there. Um, I attended the Active General Managers Conference uh, a couple weeks ago um, down in Miami. <clears throat> it was um, an interesting weekend uh, with a lot of interesting conversation. Uh, it's just, it's open to only people like me and, and, and deputies, Mike and, 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 and uh, Chris attended. Somehow Dave, Dave, uh, Got invited. I think the I don't think I know the Apple leadership role. Apple leadership was there. Uh, I, you and uh, your fellow Lester Bryant. Lester Bryant were the only board members that I saw there. So they we were in, closely watched. They yeah. infiltrated. Yeah. They were kicked out of a couple of sessions, but um, literally, literally. Uh, it, it, it's you know honestly, it's it's sort of you share the secrets. Um, you know what's going, what's really going on. Uh, we talked a lot about workforce development. Uh, really big topic around the country. Uh, we talked about you know, leadership. You know, what is leadership? Who are leaders? How do you identify the new leaders? A big problem in our industry. Uh, labor relations, uh, you know, no surprise to Corey or anybody else, everyone's in the same boat. You, you know, how, do you, how do you engage labor in making sure that our workforce is well compensated, uh, are, are happy and productive, but at the same time, you balance your budget. Uh, no one has the secret. So uh, all those things were good. It's good once a year to, to take a break and, and, and get those things talked about. Uh, as Denise reported, January was a terrible month. I hope you know, every, it seemed like every performance indicator was down. The weather certainly hurt us. These transitions hurt us. Uh, and you know, the, the trend, the nationwide trend, may be, may be catching up to us <clears throat> a little bit. There's no way we can sustain the ridership increases. Um, external relations is pretty much what I and a number of people on staff do in January, February, March, April. Um, you know, once we're through with the 
<clears throat> the state budget season will move to sort of that once a year uh, touch in with every single <laughs> elected official in the region. So I will be giving you a schedule. If you care to join me, if you know a particular mayor or uh, county leader, um, you know, it'd be great if you could attend. But I try to get that done once a year only because in the course of the year, you see a lot of people many times, a, a number of people sometimes, but there are a few <clears throat> who we don't come in contact with. We just don't want to go too long a period of time so that you hear, you never talk to me, or I never hear from you, or you only call me when you need a favor, or you know, you got an issue with a, a, a leaky tank or something. You just don't want that to be the case. So these sort of cycle of meetings um, sort of level things out. But, um, the activity report is, is, is pretty self-explanatory um, in your packets. Oh, I just wanted to, one thing. I wanted to thank uh, everybody. Um, the the high-impact governance of Doug Eady model, this is my third time through. Um, I was the staff liaison uh, the first couple of times, so I've kind of transitioned out of the liaison to the, the CEO, th CEO role, which is different, but I uh, just appreciate the time. It's not necessarily sexy or glamorous work, but our board and our governance model is different than any other governance model in upstate New York. In fact, it's different than most transit systems. It's much more open, it's much more transparent, it's much more sharing, and, and I'm convinced that um, many of our advances are a direct result of uh, this stuff. So I appreciate it. Uh, I know it's grinding out time. Thanks to Dave for, you know, engaging in it and agreeing that, yeah, it was the right thing to do. And a special thanks to Jamie. She, she got to deal with Doug every day. So I mean, you only have to deal with Doug occasionally. He's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but, you know, his, his principles, I think, work. They've worked for us, for sure. But, but she kind of nurtured and sort of isolated me from, and then from that almost daily interaction. And as an imposter to the uh, CEO conference, um, one thing to add to what was a topic of not only some sessions, but also general discussion among those that were there, is the rapid rate at which changes in technology are beginning to affect our industry. Well, there's a, a captain gave me the passenger transport and the front cover as Minnesota DOT offers free rides on an autonomous shuttle. That's what we're facing and it's going to hit us pretty quickly. So some of the concerns that are expressed at that conference among CEOs is whether as an industry we're going to be able to respond as quickly as we may need to because we're not an industry typically that moves and responds very quickly. Um, but it's kind of part and parcel to the whole ridership question. Ridership across the country is generally in decline. And there's a whole number of factors that are contributing to that decline. But we've got to figure out how to make sure that what we're doing stays as relevant as what it was when we could bank on ridership increases year after year. Because that was our, our relevance. You know, we would always say we need more money because we've got more you know, more demand for service, we need better frequency, we need more, more service. Um, and now that ridership is trending down, we've got to make sure that we're crafting the right message that touches our elected officials in a way that is going to have them understand that we're relevant, relevant still in a lot of ways other than the ridership factor. So, but it, I, you know, as a as a as an imposter board member, it was uh, I thought I thought the sessions were uh, were great. Um, you know, certainly relevant to what you folks do day in and day out, and it seemed to touch you know an aspect of much of what's involved in running the transit system. So I was excused from the session that they were talking about board member relationships. <laughs> They were worried that having me sitting there might oh. stifle the conversation. <laughs> so, 
So, so, so you know, not to belabor or to throw a, a dark cloud over this, the challenge to us, collective us, decision makers, we need to be more nimble. We need to we need to be more in tune with uh, our communities, and we need to take chances because those two things, you know, we need to be a little more risk averse. That's not going to be easy. The rest of us, excuse me, the rest of us can first. We have to be willing to take chances. And it's not going to be easy because, you know, as a public authority, you have all these regulations. Um, and I'm not saying throw the regulations out the window, but there is no way we can be nimble. And, I mean, you know, companies are introducing new products and new systems weekly. Uh, they redesign them over the weekend. You know, it takes us a year from the time we order a bus to receive a bus. A year. It takes us a week to get it ready for service. That well, and, and that bus has to last us at least 12 years. So if we procure right. something today, we have it for at least 12 years if we use federal dollars for it. So it, 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 in and of itself, there's built-in restrictions on how fast you can introduce emerging technology. Yeah. So but we've got to, you know, for all those challenges, I think we need to collectively say, you know, life is a risk. Um, life is a risk. And, and, you know, you take risks that are cal well calculated. You know, they're thoughtful. Um, and they're based on consensus. But once we've decided, we go. But we're going to have to be more nimble, especially in the technology area. You know, we joke when Chris wasn't here that, you know, the, the, the cost of technology is going like this. Well, no secret. I mean, now that we have all these systems, you have to maintain them. You know, the mistakes we made in the past was we ignored the maintenance. And I don't mean it exactly the way it sounds, but we ignored it. There was no staff support. And then when it failed or it didn't work the way we wanted it to work, we blamed the technology. When in reality, it was the lack of support and the lack of staffing strategically. So, it's going to be fun. I mean, lots of problems to solve, which makes life fun. But, but we're going to have to be a little more nimble. Mm -hmm. That was the general theme. Yeah. At some point in time, it has to happen that people are going to get out of their cars. I'm going to the campus every day now. Traffic is backed up from here to the north way. Three lanes, one person in a car. I go over to the labor department. The people are leaving one person per car. It's, it's crazy to be doing this. Uh, but, of course, what we heard over that weekend, the prediction is, you know, five years from now, a lot of those people aren't going to be driving their own car. The car's going to be driving them. Within five years. I'm not going to try to buy into all that that quick. It's going to happen. Well, we have to get more people in less vehicles. It's just... The roads are 40 percent over now. You know, I think in the first 10 years they went to 30 percent. But that doesn't mean we also have to fix it. Yeah. The roads are falling apart. And I don't know what the secret. How do you get the people out of the car? I've been trying it for 30 years with DOT. I think we got the right group of people at least to give it the best shot. We won't go down without a fight. We have no executive session scheduled. Um, I had let everyone know via email that Joe has made a decision to step down from the board. Uh, some family commitments are uh, what he needs to spend his time and energy on right now. And uh, I just want to thank Joe for the time he's been with us. Um, it's been, uh, you, you and I have had an interesting relationship specifically, <laughs> but, but, you know, and we've gone through ups and downs with each other. And, and uh, the outcome of all of that was I think it made you and I better. I think you're right. And never did I ever question your motives because I knew you had the right place in your heart for what, if we differed, it wasn't ever a question about a personal thing with me, it was because you felt strongly about your position and I felt strongly about my position. And fortunately, we were able to work through those things. And I think it did make you and I better. 
I think it made us better board members and being able to bring, bring to the table our different backgrounds. Um, and I don't mean to make this personal, but, but Joe and I have had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time through the course of this, <laughs> this, this time that we've been on the board together. So uh, I've gotten to know him better. Um, I appreciate what you bring to the table. You are very passionate about what you bring here. Um, you've been very dedicated to CDTA and what we do. Um, and I just want to thank you as you prepare for your departure uh, today. Today's Joe's last day. Um, I want to thank you for all you brought to CDTA and wish you nothing but the best. It's in my, your comments I have to echo, but it was you that did it for me. You brought me along. I'm from the construction industry. I am this way and, that, and it took a lot to get it out of me, but uh, Dave never, never weird weeds from, let's try to be nice, let's try and work together. Let's, uh, and I think he finally beat me down, and <laughs> <laughs> I may be a better man for it. <laughs> so, so not to believe all these good, you know, he, Joe, we can't say too many good things about him. But, uh, I spent a lot of time talking to Joe, getting to know him. You know, well, he's, he's unique, um, but once you kind of got to know him and he got to know you and you let your guard down, just, it's just a good person. So, so next month we will, um, he's asked me to have staff carry him in. Uh, we, will do that. we will do that at the March meeting and, and officially celebrate his uh, nine years of service. My greatest thrill has been watching this company grow. Uh, when Carn took over, and then Dave Huddle got us as a board together. And then <clears throat> Carn's leadership, uh, Jonathan coming on board, uh, uh, where is he? He's not here today. Um, the maintenance department. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but uh, yes, of course, Lance. Uh, coming to zero maintenance problems, um, you know, all that stuff and the technology and, you know, Fred coming on for a new generation of people. Yeah. The way they think with Fred coming on board and um, our safety records and everything, it's just a proud place to be. Um, I've worked with a lot of different people, and as a group, I don't think there's anybody better than this group. The board members can't, but... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, here was my joke. I knew I'd have to say a few words. <laughs> uh, my wife said to me, what are you doing with taping that all up for? <laughs> But it's been a player, it really has. Um, I've learned a lot, I've grown. You know, when you get old, you, you tend to be mean and snarly, but uh, I don't know. I feel good. It's mixed feelings. Um, Georgie called me at night, wishing me good luck. You know, that's the kind of people we got. Everybody want me coffee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coffee gets it every time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Thank you. For your service. I mean it. I really do. So we have uh, we have an opening now for the corporate secretary, which Joe has been filling. We have an opening for the treasurer position, which Bart had been filling. And elections for board, the board officers are coming up. So I've asked Denise if she would chair the nominating committee again. And she has graciously agreed to do that. I will appoint a committee at the March meeting. Um, and then the committee will report back at the April board meeting, which is when our annual elections occur. 
There are openings for all four positions. Um, I will not be continuing as chair, so the chair position will definitely be open. Um, and the secretary and treasurer positions are currently open. And then the chair will actually, whoever's elected chair at the April meeting, will appoint the chairs of the four or the three committees. The chair serves as the board operations committee chair. And then the other committee chairs make up the remaining members of the board operations committee. But we'll have three committee chairs uh, that the, the new chair can fill. Um, if anybody's interested, and I'm mentioning this early, if anybody's interested in any of the officer positions, reach out to Denise. If you want to talk to me, I'm happy to talk to anybody. Carm as well, I'm sure, would be happy to talk to anybody who has questions or interest. Um, I'm not going to fill those positions right now because we're only two months away from new officers. So the only thing I will need to do is appoint a temporary secretary to sign the resolutions for the next two months. But we'll do that at each meeting. Um, I don't think there's any reason to appoint a permanent right now with elections only two months away. So that's really just an informational item so that everybody knows that that's, that's on the clock, so to speak. Question for you, Dave. In terms of the operations committee, is there going to be an operations committee meeting in March? I know we governance kind of didn't meet. You will, we <coughs> well, the, we'll meet, I guess let's call it the old governance committee. I, I would suggest there be a meeting in March. We will most likely have a report from Lisa, if nothing else, as well. Right. We'll be, you know, close to. So plan for the Thursday morning is what I'm really asking. Yes, it could change, it's but it's just one and usually the March-April reports from her are the most relevant, right. interesting, timely. We're spending an awful lot of time. <laughs> Upcoming meetings of the board are March 28th, April 25th, which is our annual meeting, and May 30th. Any, anything else for the board today? Motion to adjourn. Oh, Mark, sorry. Yes, Ms. Um, I have surgery scheduled for March 12th, so I don't expect to be able to make committee meetings in March. Doubt that it could be board meeting. I should be back in April. Okay. Good luck. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Ms. Figueroa. Second is Nugent. All in favor? Aye. Aye.